Okay, uh, we have here the Professor Emeritus of uh, Psychology at the Sofia University, uh, Professor David Lukov. He's uh, specialized in spiritual issue, issues and psychology. And, uh, he will kindly answer our question about uh, his personal experience in, uh, in the shift of consciousness. So what was uh, uh, necessary for you in your personal experience to achieve a, a shift of consciousness? So you, you can talk about an episode or a process uh, sure. to, through which... The, the well, my work in psychology has been in this area of spiritual crises, and it's been acknowledged mainly within transpersonal psychology. Um, but now it has expanded, and there's even a diagnostic category in the DSM for religious or spiritual problem that I helped to get into the DSM to recognize that uh, people go through spiritual crises. And not surprisingly, it's based on the fact that I had my own spiritual crisis uh, when I was about 23 years old and uh, had dropped out of graduate school at Harvard University where I was studying to get a doctorate in anthropology, but I just all of a sudden decided that I didn't really know who I was or why I was getting a doctorate. And um, very, very suddenly just dropped out of school, got rid of everything I owned that would not fit into a backpack and started hitchhiking around the United States. So the year was actually 1971, but culturally in the United States, it was what we still would call the 60s. Mm. And um, I hitched hike up in Canada, into Mexico, and then ended up in San Francisco. And a great San Francisco story, I was just walking around Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, and somebody offered me a tab of LSD. And I had never done a psychedelic drug. Um, but I decided that I was um, on the road to find out. Some of you may recognize that as the title of a song by Cat Stevens. But that was like my mantra. I'm on the road to find out. I had lived a very, very sheltered life, raised in a suburb, uh, had gone from high school to college to graduate school. Even my summer jobs were at the university. I really didn't. I had never been to Europe. Um, I, I was really a very naive, uh, inexperienced person at that point in my life, but at least I realized it. <laughs> so that's why I started this process of trying things like not being in school and hitchhiking, and I decided to try LSD. Um, now at that point in my life, um, I would describe myself as an atheist. I had been raised in a Jewish home, but we were never members of a, a, a Jewish synagogue. And I never learned Hebrew, I never learned Jewish prayers. We didn't, you know, we maybe celebrated with a dinner uh, some of the Jewish holidays, but it, we never went to temple or did any of those things. So I was very, not only atheist, but I thought religion was just total bullshit. Anyway, I took this LSD the next day. I waited a day, got up in the morning and didn't eat. I did some things like that that were the right things to do. And I took the LSD and then I went back to Golden Gate Park and just had an amazing experience. I mean, all of a sudden I could see trees breathing. I would walk over to a tree and it was alive. I could feel it. I, I ended up hugging trees, doing things I had never done. And then I went to the ocean and just looked at those waves. And, oh, I was the waves. The waves were in me. And these were all very, very, very new experiences. Now, I know enough to label them as a kind of like mystical experience. But for me, that was all new. And at the end of the day, after doing this, I thought, well, that was really an interesting experience, and I might want to try it again someday, but, you know, it didn't change my life. It wasn't transformative. Well, 
I went to bed and then I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And as I walked in to the bathroom, I looked in the mirror and for some reason I was holding my hand like this, which now I, I, I know I would call a mudra. I didn't know anything about mudras or Buddhism or Hinduism or anything at that point in my life. But it started to glow. It started to give off a white light. And immediately I knew that that was a sign that I was a reincarnation of Buddha. And then I had another flash. Oh, I was also a reincarnation of Jesus Christ. And I had a new mission to bring, to write a holy book, a new holy book, new Bible that would unite all the people of the world. That Buddhism had been a, a religion for the East. Uh, it, when I say that, it's so naive, I'm embarrassed, but that's what I thought at the moment. Buddhism is a religion of the East. Christianity is a religion of the West, and I'm going to bring them together. Um, and I immediately pulled out this journal that I'd been carrying in my backpack and started to write my holy book. And I spent five days doing this and hardly slept, hardly ate, you know, would eat peanuts and get back to work, uh, take a half hour nap and get back to work. Um, and then at the end of five days, I had this holy book. And I decided that Berkeley, I was in San Francisco, Berkeley was right across the bay. Uh, I decided Berkeley was the new Jerusalem. So I went over to uh, Berkeley and I, 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 print, I had printed up like about 40 copies of this book and I just started handing them out to people, handing them out to cars. And I thought, all I have to do is distribute uh, these copies and then they'll spread around the world and I'll be recognized as kind of like a... Uh, founder or a messiah of this new religion. So a good thing about my belief is that since I had written it all in this book, I didn't need to tell people about it. So I didn't go around saying I was, uh, I founded a new religion or I'm the messiah or I'm Jesus or I'm, I, didn't, I didn't need to say that because it was in my book. And I assumed people would read it and realize that and so on. So I just thought I needed to wait. And I had no money. And I was a very lucky person because I had friends who for two months uh, let me stay with them, uh, fed me, um, supported me, talked with me about my, these ideas. And that allowed me, which many, most people don't get to do these days, to complete this inner journey I was on. It was a psychotic experience because I had all these uh, beliefs about myself that were very, very, very grandiose and not real. But nevertheless, um, I was um, uh, able to be supported in this. And at the end of two months, I was with no medication, no hospitalization, no therapy even, um, I got back to earth, both feet on the ground. And I realized, wow, what, you know, how could I think I was Buddha? How could I think I was Christ? These are people I knew nothing about. I knew nothing about religion. So the first thing I did was start to read. I read Joseph Campbell, I read Jung, and I started to realize that I had been on this inner journey. And ultimately it led me to you know, decide to, oh, well, you know, Buddha's all a, a lot about meditation. So I took meditation class. I took some Tai Chi, some yoga. You know, I, I started to really, I became a spiritual seeker. In fact, that episode really was, I, I consider it my spiritual awakening. And then later in my life, uh, I, went, I went back to graduate school in psychology and uh, ended up uh, making spiritual crises, the study of spiritual crises and therapy for spiritual crises and how to help people uh, in a spiritual crisis. That has been the focus 
of my um, my work. So my work was triggered by a spiritual crisis, and much of my work uh, now uh, in the world has focused on spiritual emergencies. So that was my story. <laughs> Now, I'm not hearing you. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing story. Thank you very much. <laughs> and do you think uh, there was, uh, um, also later on, there was any element that was really kind of any, anything that helped you to achieve this uh, shift of consciousness? Later on, also, like, um, maybe like a spiritual practice or... Um, I don't know, any kind of uh, therapy or any kind of introspection, any kind of activities you understand yeah. or to achieve like also like kind of uh, more uh, a shift of consciousness. Right, yeah, because that's important because uh, psychedelic drugs can really create a spiritual awakening, mm. but that it's, it doesn't enable you to uh, sustain that. <laughs> so uh, I, I did start at that very soon after that experience i did start to uh try different spiritual practices and uh i think that was great it was, it was a wonderful period of my life exploring you know going to workshops with native americans and lamas and zen masters and I, joseph campbell and uh, all kinds of wonderful people joan halifax was one of my main teachers um but um uh, for the about 40 years I've been doing Tai Chi regularly and for about 30 years I've been practicing the martial art of Aikido and I have a black belt in that. Um, I do have a, a, a regular meditation practice. It's not every day but I'm in a, a group that meets uh, every week and then sometimes we do a, a day-long retreat as well and I've done several meditation retreats. So um, I, I think spiritual practices are very important to sustain a spiritual awakening and deepen it. And also to integrate experiences, I think. Yeah, that's a very important word, integrate. In fact, I, it, much of my uh, art, uh, writing, I've written about 80 articles on spirituality and uh, mental health. And much of it is about this area of integration that uh, psychosis uh, and spiritual crises often expose people to a lot of things you know like it exposed me to buddha and christ but that's just a glance a, a quick look and then to really um benefit from that one has to do some hard work one has to do the practices spend the time uh, figuring it out. Uh, in my case, I also did go into Jungian analysis for five years, and that was very helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, the integration is a big part of it, and it can benefit, I think, from therapy. Uh, I've written five case studies about how people have integrated their spiritual crises, and in those case studies, um, I do emphasize the work of integration as what makes the difference. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, time and your interview. And it was an honor to, to be listening to your story and, to, and to, to, to know you personally. Thank you. Well, thank you for asking me. And I definitely look forward to seeing the whole uh, uh, at, uh, conference uh, online. Thank you.